What's happening? Mediocre people of YouTube. As the title suggests, we are talking about why music sucks. Like new music. Basically anything that was recorded after about 2005. And what you can do about it to release your talent. Release your... Um, yeah, talent and um, creativity, right? Um, and I like doing these videos where I, I pick the title. I choose the title before I, I do the video because it helps to keep me on point, which helps to keep some of you on point, um, my subscribers. Uh, because some of my subscribers have great difficulty um, digesting the information in the video and they they put it in the comment section and then I read their comments and their comments make absolutely no sense to me and it's not because of me it's because they, they can't digest the information so like I said I like to um, do this stuff where you know I can uh pick a title and try to stay on point for you guys, for all the subscribers. So today, what I was thinking about was about how music is terrible. Go ahead. I know I'm backing up all the way down the fucking street. It's how music is terrible and it just continues to be terrible. And, um, you know, that's why, uh, you know, people are still listening to, um, shit from the, uh, from the fucking 60s and 70s, although that music will never go away, and it shouldn't, because music is something that just goes on and on, which is great. I, I, I could make an entire video about what I love about music, and, and one of the things that I love about music is it's timeless, you know? and recorded music, how you can record something now that somebody's going to listen to a hundred years from now, you know, it's just timeless, you know, there's, again, we, some of the greatest songs, uh, ever played on the radio are from the 1960s and 70s, it's 2023, going into 2024 soon, you know, and these, this, these songs were recorded like I said, in the 1960s and 70s and 50s and 40s and 1920s and, and 1800s. And it's just, and, and, and then you get into some of the classical stuff that just goes back so far. It's like, I love, that's one of the things that I love about music is how the, the history of it. I don't think we have a history of anything else like that we can compare to, like we can compare music pretty friggin' amazing. So, here is my diatribe as to why music currently sucks, continues to suck, and has sucked since about 2000. Somewhere between 2000, 2005. Um, right about the time American Idol came on television, and, um, and we're going to get to this part right about the time people started using in-ear monitors. And I don't have an issue with in-ear monitors um, when you, let's say you write an album and then you go on tour. You know, there's nothing wrong with using in-ear monitors. If anything, you're going to save your hearing, which is a good thing. However, and in a live situation too, you know, for me, and there's a lot of you younger guys who have never experienced what I'm about to say right now. This is the secret to writing music, right? One of the secrets to writing the greatest song of all time, right? There's, for a guitar player like myself, there's something to be said about standing in front of a full Marshall stack with a super lead, 100 watt super lead head, and just
just your guitar plugged directly into the Marshall 100 watt super lead with a full stack or a half stack. Um, and you're just kind of out there. It just pushes you out there, you know, naked. And you've got to play. You know, there's no hiding behind uh, massive amounts of distortion and, or, or gain or delay and, and different um, um, effects, guitar effects. And don't get me wrong, I love my effects, man. There's a time and a place for guitar effects pedals and they make everything sound wonderful. And, but man, you know, there's really something to be said. You can kind of see how excited I am just talking about it, you know. Standing in front of that stack and with your guitar plugged directly into it. And then you have four other guys, you know, one being a drummer, another being a bass player, and another being a singer, you know, uh, or maybe five guys, you know. You might have a rhythm guitar player, you might have a keyboard player. There's something to be said for a great keyboard player. Uh, keyboard players, man, don't ever, uh, don't ever discount the keyboard player. They can bring a lot, a lot to a band. Um, so then you got four, you know, three or four other guys, and you're in a room, you know, together. Not a very big room. It'd be great if you have a big room, but you know, back in my day, we used to rent storage units. Uh, you know, climate controlled storage units. And they're still doing it today, where, uh, of course, if I remember the first one we rented, we actually pulled the electricity off of the, uh, the lights outside because there was no electrical lines run inside the building. And then after we did that, the owner of the unit was like, wow, that's a pretty cool idea. So he started, started setting up his storage units with electricity. And there was, God, at that particular place, there was probably... 25, 30 bands in that place at any given time. There used to be a place in Redford, Michigan called The Lofts. And I think they had about maybe 30 spaces and it was just bands. And it was really cool. It's just these nice big rooms. Big enough for your drums and your, you know, all your shit. And, and big enough to where you could rehearse and still have an area, you know, an open area to work with whatever you want to do. Um, but these times, you know, when it's just loud, man, you know, I love it loud. You know, I guarantee that song was written in a practice room, you know, in a rehearsal room. Loud, you know. And when you're out there in all that loudness, that's when creativity comes in. You know, because it's so loud, you can't even hear yourself think. And when writing music, you don't really need to be thinking, you know. You need to be writing from your heart. Whoa, there goes my camera. It's really important to write from your heart, you know. Some of the greatest songs, no matter what type of music you're writing, whether it's blues or, or whatever it is, let me tidy up this camera a bit, get it back in where it needs to be. No matter what kind of music you're writing, you know, you should be writing it from the heart. No question. Um, and that's where it comes in, you know. I mean, yeah, we, we would, you know, a lot of times we'd be jamming out, we'd come up with a, something, a riff, and then we would stop and write the lyrics to it, you know. And then go back into it and, and try to put those lyrics in, you know, that's one thing, um, you might do, you know, kind of quiet, is write lyrics, but then there's some people who enjoy it being loud while they're writing lyrics, too, um, and I've had the great fortune several times in my life to be in the room with my guitar in hand, um, playing and the magic happens you know and anybody that you know plays an instrument knows what I'm talking about when I when I talk about the magic happening you know whether
whether you are whether you are rehearsing with your band or maybe you're just by yourself in your bedroom with your little bedroom blaster amplifier you too have had times where you've picked up your guitar on a particular day and it just seems like it's just coming out of you like crazy like all of a sudden you're like 10 times better than you were the day before or in a rehearsal room and for whatever reason everybody it, everything is just kicking and everybody is just on point there's like nothing you can do except add greatness to whatever it is you're playing that's the magic. That's the magic happening. And it's at those times that you hope to God that somebody happens to push record, you know? Um, which I have also had a uh, great fortune of having somebody push record, you know? And I've recorded many songs, that, you know, uh, uh, real, actual recordings, you know, where we actually deliberately recorded a song. I have many, many recordings of not actually deliberately doing anything. Um, but the magic is on those tapes, you know, if you listen through, all of a sudden you'll hear it, you know, you can, it's like when you buy a new album, and I know none of you buy albums anymore. I mean, some people do, but let's just say you buy Metallica, and kill them all. And you're 14, 15 years old right now, or you're 18, 20 years old, if you hear that album for the first time, there's certain songs in there that have the magic. It's actually, that particular album, Kill Em All, is an entirety of magic in my opinion. But like then you get on to Masters of Puppets, you know, and um, there's certain songs that have the magic grabs you and you can go on and on you know any artist on any given album there are certain songs that are just insane They're, they just have it and then there's others that not so much you know um, does it make those songs any less no not really but they sell a lot less right um, you know you can record an album and, you know, you kind of go through and you kind of figure out, okay, this song and this song could be a single. You know, you brainstorm, a bunch of people brainstorm. You bring it out to a small group of people and ask, ask them what they think should be the single off the album. When they used to do that. Um, and then you kind of get a, you know, you can agree on what you're going to push as a single. Um, but everything that I just talked about was recorded in a room at very loud temperatures, <laughs> you know, very loud dB decibels, extremely high temperatures, or maybe uh, it was in the dead of winter when you're freezing your ass off, you know, um, whatever it was. All the great songs were recorded or were written live and loud, right? <laughs> Fucking A, man. And I still get excited just talking about this stuff. Um, and, I, I, and I'm actually on another level, I'm getting excited for you guys who have never had the experience of, you know full, you know, acoustic drums, Marshall stacks, you know, bass players, rig and stack, um, you know, you haven't had that experience, you've recorded what you've recorded with headphones in front of a computer, you know, um, with just little uh, electronic drum sets, um, and that's cool, I mean, I'm not knocking electronic drum sets, there's a time and a place for those, I mean, there's a lot of bands who play live, especially nowadays with an electronic drum kit because out of necessity, because the, the venues that they're playing are not going to allow, a lot of them are getting away from even allowing 
full of acoustic drum kits, which is a fucking shame. A shame and a sham. They are doing a disservice to their customers by not allowing their customers to hear the entertainment at their greatest. Uh, live and loud, right? Um, good. So, for you younger guys and anybody else who hasn't had that experience of full stacks and, and on stage monitors and everything else, oh, back to what I was just talking about, you know, we're fortunate here in Detroit. We have a lot of, uh, not as many as we used to, certainly not nearly as many as we used to, but we still have a lot of venues where they actually want you to be loud. You know, they, 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 um, they promote that, that they want live loud bands. You know, there's a place in Westland, Michigan called the Token Lounge. And they, uh, it's just a small place, always has been, but it's known for loud entertainment, you know, good, good entertainment. Um, anyway, we got plenty of places here in Detroit where you could go probably half as many as there was 25 years ago. 25 years ago, you could go to just about any bar and, and plug in and have a full acoustic drum set and there was no issue. Um, there just wasn't an issue that they actually expected that, you know, from the tiniest little bar in rural Michigan, rural northern Michigan, to the biggest um, live entertainment venues in the city of Detroit, you know, they expected that it was going to get loud, um, and then not so much, you know, uh, the casinos really started with that, you know, really tamping down the volumes, um, but, uh, yeah, so for any of you young guys or otherwise who haven't had that experience of, you know, even if you just practice it by yourself in front of a 100 watt tube amp, full stack, half stack, you know, just on 10, no effects pedals, just you and your guitar, I challenge you to go do that. And I can promise you it will bring out your creativity. It will make you a better guitar player because you have to be able to play the instrument when you're not hiding behind a bunch of effects. You know, as much as I love my Boss Katana modeling amplifier, which is words I never thought would come out of my mouth, it, there's no comparison to being in front of my X100D in a, in, a, in a half stack full of uh, electro voice speakers 4x12 cab. There's no comparison. Now, it, does my Katana do the job for, you know, my daily needs? Yeah, sure it does. But when I really want to dig in and play, I, I plug into my stack, you know. I really want to, if I'm writing something, or if it's, or if I'm recording, or if it's something that means something to me, then, you know, I'm going right back to my stack. So, yeah, for any of you that haven't experienced it, you need to. And better yet, maybe you don't even want to be in a band. So, for those of you that don't really even want to be in a band, you should still get yourself a 100 watt half stack or full stack and, and play that way um, you know when you're done you'll be kind of half deaf deaf and I crave that that deafness that comes with after you're playing rehearsing I, I crave that's a craving of mine I'm addicted um, but for those of you who are you know forming bands or in bands you know you guys get in a room together, stop sending the files to each other and putting a recording together. Get in a room together and play it live.
because that's what recording was all has always been. Recording has always and should always be about getting the best live performance out of the band and recording, documenting that performance and then putting it out to the public if you if that's what you want to do with it. So That is today's lesson for all of you. And the reason music continues to suck and has sucked for a long time is because of the way people go about making music these days. Um, there's not a lot of creativity. You know, yeah, there's great songwriters and everything, but you rarely hear best live performance the band can deliver. You rarely hear that anymore. And that, my friend, is what has made every big artist you know about big. So go out there, get yourself together, and turn it up to fucking 11. I, I gotta go. It's that time. And trying to get on 94 here. Until next time, don't get it twisted and peace out.